All right, so you can see uh, that the Q1 column is actually towards the right, where most financial statements is going to be on the left, and the last year is going to be on the right. But they do it sort of backwards. Of course, I think Google will probably tell you that everybody else is doing it backwards, which may be very well be true. So anyway, um, so you can see their revenue they booked is more than Microsoft. It's 68 billion. We're going to go. Google is a much Younger company than Microsoft. It's uh, bigger technically by revenue. What was the Microsoft revenue again? Let me just pull this up here. Well, it doesn't want me to do that. The little OneDrive thing is a little finicky actually. I don't like it uh, for this reason, but there's no perfect system for this kind of thing. Um, I might actually be putting this in the wrong place, so hold on one second. We go to desktop code. So now I'm doing these more publicly for you guys. Oh Lord. Okay, let's see. Oh boy. Okay, that should work. Yeah, there's no perfect system, um, unfortunately. Excel has its limitations, Google Sheets has its limitations, they all have their own limitations. So, where is that? Now I'm getting annoyed. When I get annoyed, bad things happen. Don't annoy me. I'm just kidding. I said I wouldn't entertain, but I can't help it sometimes. Is this case sensitive, really? I hope not. It's the only thing I can think of. Okay, but why? But why? Yeah, like, but why? Alright, let's just open it like that. Um, yeah, you can see revenue for Microsoft last quarter was 49 billion, right? For Google. it was 68 billion. So technically, Google sells more product than Microsoft, right? In a quarterly basis, isn't that crazy? Microsoft, let's let's figure this out. Microsoft founded, I wanna say 1978? No, 1975. That's right, Bill Gates was, uh, I forget what happened in 1978. Maybe an IPO? No, not quite that fast. Something happened in 78, I just forgot what it was. Oh yeah. I guess it was the photo. Welcome to the history of Microsoft. It was the year 1978. Shadow dancing by Andy Gibb topped the billboard charts for the year. The United States banned chlorofluorocarbons as spray propellants for damaging the ozone layer, and in vitro fertilization found its first success with the birth of baby girl Louise Brown in the UK. But in 1970... We didn't want to have a single product that was a, a dominant product. We, we wanted to hire in more software people and have a full product line. In a sense, the uh, one of the earliest things we decided to do... Bill Gates was my hero, man. This is 93. Was this to make available on the microprocessor like everything that had guy. been available on the... My dad and my cousins and my uncle would all talk about Bill Gates. Any computer. And that's why we did the uh, languages, COBOL. COBOL. Assembler. Um, COBOL is a common uh, business-oriented orient, business oriented language, I believe. It's one of the first computer programming languages. Um, business object language, business, uh, common business object language, something like that. Um, so anyway, Microsoft is 1975, right? Okay, when was Google? Was that 94, would you say? Oh, 98! Isn't that interesting? So, so Google had... 
Microsoft had, and Microsoft's arguably the most successful business of all time, right? Twenty-three year head start. Twenty-three year head start. Microsoft had, and Google still has more revenue. How crazy is that? So um, it's interesting to see that uh, uh, even though it has more revenue, technically Microsoft is still more valuable, right? The market cap of Microsoft is higher. It's 1.9 trillion versus Google's 1.5 trillion. It's pretty close, though. 23-year head start. It's really remarkable. So you've got to look at the age of a company to determine its success as much as anything else. It's also works that way with wealth. Uh, it's very, I won't say easy, but it's easier when you have more time to get wealthy. That's why a lot of the wealthiest people are very old. That's why uh, somebody like Mark Zuckerberg is very, very impressive because he's wealthier than most people and he's also still quite young. So, anyway, you do the formulas in here, and I won't belabor that, but. Um, Like I said, they, they should all sort of fall together. And at some point, we'll go through exactly how the balance sheet works, or they, I'm sorry, this is an income statement, how exactly the income statement works and what it means. Um, but suffice it to say that it's the sometimes called the statement of operations um, because it's a, uh, it's a snapshot of how the business did in that quarter. And what I like to do is I like to list them all side by side because this is useful to look at, but it's not telling me about the quarter before, or the quarter before that, or the quarter before that. It's only giving me this last quarter and the year before quarter, which is helpful, but it's not everything. And I'd like to see everything, see a picture of the company my way. And that's why making these models is a highly customized thing. You can't just make one template. You can't make um, a computer program that's going to do it all for you. This is the best way to do it by far. Um, and I've tried every single way. Uh, got my own, a lot of my own special tools I made myself with a team of 10 programmers that work for me. So um, let's see, I'm going to put a decimal point here. All right. Oops, I put cogs and gross profit backwards here. Cogs is cost of goods sold, so that's the cost of actually making the, the product in question. And for Google, that's actually mostly traffic acquisition cost, I believe. All right, so the gross margin is pretty low actually for a software company, but it's not that big deal. Their operating margin is quite high, which we'll talk about later, but let's look at revenue growth. Very fast, 23% revenue growth, and that's, you know, like I said, they're they're one of the they have one of the best products ever made. Their ad machine. But if you took uh, Google's earnings, 66 billion a year, because last quarter was 16, so you multiply 16 times four, and you get 66 billion. Um, we're going to divide enterprise value by 66 billion, and we get 20 times earnings. That's actually quite cheap. All right, so. I'm going to make a mistake here. You should not do this. I'm just going to go buy some Google right now. Just because uh, I don't want to be too boring here. All right, so what do we do? Let's buy one share of Google, two shares. Let's buy two shares. The stock price is so large, you can buy a half a share if you'd like. But I'm going to buy two shares. I'm just going to buy at the market. 
All right. Order filled. Thank you. So we bought two shares of Google for twenty-one ninety-nine eighty-four piece, um, and that's uh, about four thousand dollars. You can see. So we're long Google, AMC, and SPY. Um, so we're all long. We don't have any shorts. So we are betting basically that the market will go up. We also have some cash, forty-one thousand dollars of cash here. So most of the account is not invested. About twenty percent invested. But um, you know, we'll see how that goes. Again, I don't recommend you invest with that kind of decision making process. It takes a lot more to make an investment than that. It takes hundreds of hours of homework and research. But I just wanted to spice things up a little bit.